me because I've got to contain the rage, Sheriff. i got to contain the rage, and the only way to contain the rage is to stab a goddamn pumpkin, Michael. If you don't come here, you ass will float. Like fake blood. It's good, Tina. It's good, Tina. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I'm Mike. He's Jay. The Friday the 13th reviews fucking continue. And it's raining. Mommy, it's raining. It's raining red. It's not raining red, it's blood, bitch. Part six. Hey guys, look. I think I'm bleeding. I think it's part six. Yeah, part six. Part six. Jason lives. He comes back for more. That's the right title, isn't it? Yeah. Jason lives? It, it makes sense. We a thousand percent yeah. on that one? It's, it's Jason. You sure? Yeah. It gets confusing. Look. Okay. It gets confusing. So we had part five. We talked about part five. Part five was the cosplayers don't give me a hug. Ha <laughs> We look like we just had sex with virgins. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. No, look. So part five was basically the cosplayer version of Jason. We got the uh, low end version of Jason. Some and this bullshit. One, in this one, they were like, you know what? Let's bring back the magic. Let's bring back the table. Stop wiping your fake blood on my fake blood. So, or is it fake? Oh, corn syrup. <laughs> uh, is it on my face? Not probably. So, what we do is we go with this. Tommy is still being Tommy, and he wants to make for sure that Jason is dead. So he recruits some poor sap from the mentalist that he's been residing in since part five. And by the way, part five never cleared up. What the fuck is happening at the beginning of this movie? But it's Friday the Thirteenth. So Basically, <clears throat> this erases Part Five. Like, if you really look at it, you can totally erase Part Five from our memories, and it totally works out. And I'm all right with that. He goes to the grave site of Jason, and forever wants to. He wants to burn the motherfucker alive. Like he's like, you know what? Not alive. He's dead anyway. But he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna torch this bitch. I'm gonna cremate him, and we never have to worry about Jason and his machetes again. No. No more machetes. No Machete. more. And bad Jason. So. But by seeing Jason, he gets all pissed off and goes goddamn psycho for no fucking reason and stabs him with a metal-plated part of the fence from the cemetery and then 1.21 gigawatts <laughs> lightning hits and revives Jason yeah. as it would happen. It's like Flashpoint Paradox, only Jason doesn't get super speed. He gets supernatural. Yeah, at this point, Jason, when Jason comes back, Jason is full-on supernatural, which is... <laughs> I like it. It's fucking amazing. <clears throat> I love it. When you think about it and you put it together, yeah. it's, just, it's, it's a rebirth of Jason. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is the fucking supernatural. And yeah, it's batshit. It's stupid as fuck that, like, just, oh, I randomly got struck by lightning and got brought back to life like Frankenstein. You've been thunderstruck. Oh, yeah. In the name of the series and its batshitness, it's fucking awesome. Because now Jason is full on supernatural. There's no fucking around. You don't really have to follow that many timelines. He's unstoppable, unfucking killable. He's got worms in his shit, and it's a fun time to be had by Yeah, all. those effects on the body were really cool. Like, I did, I did like when, you know, he opens his eyes for the first time, there's maggots crawling around it, and he was like, What the fuck just happened? It's like, <laughs> he's like, I was dead, and now I'm alive. And then Tommy gets over him and straddles him, like, we're gonna do some Fifty Shades of Grey shit. And he's like, fuck this. He waits for him to get out of the grave, they pulls him back, Tommy's freaking out. His friend, unknown red shirt from Star Trek, is like, oh shit, Tommy. Jason, full on Mike Tyson, punches this guy's heart out. Like, that was one of the cooler scenes. Yeah. Like, he goes, fuck! And I had to make sure you had fuck. a heart. Thump thump, thump thump, you're dead. And then Jason's like, no, Jason, no! <laughs> Stop! I mean, it's like, when are we meeting Mr. Glass? Tommy escapes out into the wilderness with badass Jason alive and well now after the 1.21 gigawatts to his body has revived him and given him supernatural speed. With, and I might say, the greatest opening of the series. It lets you know what you're fucking in for with this movie. You get the James Bond, Jason walks out and slashes some titties, not titties, but he slashes, and then you've got the James Bond opening and it tells you, look, we're gonna have a blasty blast with this fucking movie. It's no more Cre Camp Crystal Lake, okay? It's it's called Force, Force Green. Force Green. Like that really solved everything. Sounds like the new mall. Twin Pines Mall. Trouble at the Circle K. The sheriff of this fucking movie is an asshole that it's... catches up to Tommy and basically doesn't believe anything he's fucking saying at all. He doesn't catch up with Tommy. Tommy actually goes to the police station as the nut that he is and tries to tell him, like, Jason Voorhees is back. <laughs> I just hate the way the motherfucker talks. And by I the way, like this is the new Tommy. He, this is Tom. No. I like him. There's only one Tommy, and he's the Green Ranger. I like him. Dude. 
do 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 <laughs> Dragon Sword. There's only one Tommy, and actually the only Tommy that I would accept as an adult Tommy was part five. I, I actually like that Tommy better totally than this Tommy. Totally disagree. I like this Tommy because this Tommy comes with less baggage, less emotional issues, it's less serious, it's fun, and really this Tommy is the embodiment of this movie. Like he shows up, there's not a whole lot of baggage, we don't have to take things seriously. Yeah, he's been through a lot of shit, but he just wants to kill Jason, it's gonna be a fun time, and let's just fucking have a, a, a fun goddamn movie. A nice 80s movie. God, That's this, why I love this, this movie so goddamn like much. Fucking floats that you would get at a cheap ass resort. Well, so anyhow, they were 99 cents. Right. I gotta be frugal. Got the YouTube thrift shop. doesn't pay us anymore. Thrift shop. Tommy runs to the police station, begging the the cop that looks like, you know, a Tom porn, Hanks. Por, no, I was gonna say a porn star from 1968 that changed his identity to come back as a cop of a small town. He reminds me if Tom Hanks had sex with. Um, the guy who played uh, Chucky, uh, motherfucking Brad Dorf. Brad Dorf. If Tom Hanks had sex with Brad Dorf, he'd come back at this sheer as this sheriff. That would be physically impossible, but it could happen, I guess, in one day. But she yeah, should watch Toy Story. They fucked. Yeah. Oh. And he's like, nobody's gonna listen to your fucking lip, you stupid ass kid. From the I'll fucking paint this office with your fucking brain. Mental or something. Yeah. Great. You're gonna get reelected with that slogan. I can't see with this. If anybody disagrees with me, I'm gonna paint the fucking office with your brain. <laughs> uh, anyhow, so at this point, he throws his ass in the fucking cell, and he's like, "Look, you're crazy as hell. There is no more Jason. Yeah. Jason Voorhees is dead. He's dead. He's dead. They're all dead. Oh, 600 hours, Ethan. D E D. Bike sickle. Hey. Dead. That was a motorcycle. That was a, that was one of the uh, gang members hey. that Jason hadn't got to yet. The guy from Ghost. Do you guys remember the movie Ghost with yeah. Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze? Th that dude, I'm actually, I was shocked to see him in it. Like, he's, I mean, he's not a huge actor or whatever, yeah. but I would never have thought him. He's to the be quintessential in it. when you're watching a movie like an old school movie like this. You go, oh, who the fuck is that? Yeah. IMDb time, and then you have a great time with your penis. It's just fun. It's it, it doesn't take itself too seriously. You get fun ass kills out of it. It really is the birth of like the really fun ass, just awesome kills. Jason, and what's best about this movie, dude, is that like even though it doesn't take itself too seriously. I'm just gonna say it. This is gonna sound fucked up. Say it. But for me, this is the Shaun of the Dead of the 80s slasher films. It's funny, yes. It's funny, it's just serious enough that you can take it a little bit serious and have fun with it. Stop. I love it. I do, I, I fucking was, love it, this movie. It is definitely a Shaun of the Dead of the Jason series. Yeah, of the 80s slashers. Of the Jason series. Of the 80s slashers. No. Yeah, no. I go out on limbs, man. You get, you, I just live fucking life. You might fucking get, you might break a limb one day and have a limb go up your butt. I'm willing. Good. Uh, good. good. <laughs> uh, no, oh yeah, my God. it is a very fun, different kind of yeah. Jason movie. But it's just got that and little I think, bit of seriousness. But you know what? I like that makes it legit. It's you not know, too stupid. One of the coolest things about this thing is it didn't take itself seriously, and that's what I really enjoy. It's hilarious. Because at this point, you're already in part six. I mean, there's no way people are buying. You know, some kind of backstory you're selling us, Jim. Yeah. They're not gonna buy it. So just have fun with what you got. Take the material, fucking take it light, you know, like lighthearted, and just fucking use it. Yeah. I mean, there's so many cool, funny ass death scenes in this. Like one of the funnier ones, he goes and he runs across these paintballers, and these fuckers are the dumbest, weirdest corporate executive paintballers ever. He throws this one dude in the tree, you see the smiley face, and I was thinking of uh, Forrest Gump, have a nice day. <laughs> so, a little bit too corny, but at the same time, when I always watched it, I always just assumed that the smiley face was already carved into the tree. I kind of, But he just happened to slam into a car. Like, if, if you imagine that he actually made the smiley face, he hit him so hard, it's kind of stupid. Yeah. I just like to imagine kinda it was like, already there. Kind of like maybe your toast had the Virgin Mary on it. Yeah, no. Yeah, it it's possible. No. No, I'm saying, but it's possible that the Darth tree Vader already... Toast. They got a Darth Vader toast maker. You can buy that shit. Well, here's the other part. Affiliate. Link. I thought Blow right up. before he slammed him into the tree, though, he pulled his fucking arm off with the machete. And I thought it was funny because he looked at it. He's like, is this buy one, get one? <laughs> shit fucking crazy. Like, he was up, just dude. like, god damn. That was one of the best scenes of the whole movie. And I'll, just... I'll, let me talk. Let me tell you really quick about this is not my favorite version of what Jason looked like, but he had the goddamn full on Batman utility belt. Yeah. Like, he had all the good things in the utility belt. I'm not going to lie. In that scene, he had a nice butt. I'm not into dudes, I'm just saying he had a nice butt. But they replaced him later in the movie because they thought that Jason was, was a little good. bit too overweight. 
But I like the guy who played yeah, Jason. He had a I big, thought he did a good big, job. Juicy but he had a very workman like stature to him. Like he had the gloves and like the fucking utility yeah, belt. I like the, he you was ready to go. Yeah, I, he was a pure huntsman at this time. Mm -hmm. Snow White and the Huntsman should God have had him in it. Damn you, Chris Hemsworth. So, and then he also goes after the other three that are running around after he kills this motherfucker and goes three for one. Triple kill. I mean, do you know how hard that is to do with the machete? You yeah. chopped off all their fucking heads at one slice. I've man. gotten him in Halo before. Triple I've got, kills? I've got, I've got, Those felt fucking good, didn't when they? You get, uh, well, no, the best in Halo is when you get... When you hear, no, no, no. Well, the kills, yeah, but when you hear this. Unstoppable. Kill atrocity. The only thing that you really see different in this is that he won't kill kids. Yeah. Like you actually see that in one moment that he could have killed a kid, and all he wants to do is just tear. He's like, "Do you like my mask? Do you like my Ugh. fucking mask?" Like Ugh. he gets down, and he never like hurts the kids or whatever. But which I like. I like that Michael and people argue with me about this in the comments all the time. When I talk about that. Well, that Michael doesn't kill kids. In a video before, I was like, "Michael doesn't kill fucking kids," and everyone's like, "Yes, he does. With he Jamie. tries to kill kids all the time, but he never fucking does. No, he never actually fucking kills I think, the kids." I think they were they were talking about Jamie. No, no well, yeah, any of them, but uh, like no, he was trying to he kill never, Jamie, but he doesn't. He wanted to, but he doesn't. He waits till she's come of, get her, Michael. Legal Michael, age you want her, Michael? But then he wanted to do it. But he doesn't. Anyway, this is not. But he doesn't. We're gonna get into that. But so Jason, we established that does not kill kids. Like yeah. he just he just like smells them. Maybe he just wants to hang out with them. Yeah, he's like, hey, like his mentality level is probably the same as theirs. Like, do you like Legos? Pantene Pro V. I fucking love Martin the Grave Digger, dude. He was a great character in this movie, set the tone, and he went Deadpool and broke the fourth wall when he's digging the grave and he looks at the camera he's like, some people just have a sick idea of entertainment. This movie was so fucking, <clears throat> and you will not hear this a lot about a Jason movie, maybe ever. This movie was fucking smart. It was humorous, it was smart, it was ingenious. My favorite shot, maybe of the entire film, is when Jason finally shows up to the uh, to four screen or whatever, and he's walk. It's just subtle, but he's walking in, and there's the sign outside of him walking in, and it's like, we encourage like teamwork, sportsmanship, having fun, and Jason's like just walking by it. It's just one of those little subtle things. I didn't love the the speeding question mark sign. I thought that was a little too like hot yeah. shots part two. There were some cool kills. One of the cooler kills, I thought, came at the hands of the uh, RV. Yeah. Like... It's a great scene. After the dude's done court, after he's done fucking his girl... 80s I mean, style, but also PG. No titties in this movie. They know how to do it right. I think blood just got in my mouth a little bit. Good. Again, corn syrup. Good. That's not corn syrup. <laughs> Friday night, baby. It's fake as fuck! Woo! Um, so, after that whole scene happened, he's like, I'll take it back, baby. Don't worry. I'll get your RV back to your dad before he realizes what's going on. And he starts driving. He jams the fucking radio. And the, Alice the, Cooper. The, the hardcore music. Yeah, exactly. The hardcore music comes on. And the girl's like, oh, shit. And she's like, you know, she doesn't have her seatbelt on. And then Jason's in the bathroom. At this point, he's probably stomach sick. He's like, come here, bitch. And he's like, come in here. And then she's like screaming for him. And he's like, hey, babe, what's up? He's like, are you taking a shit? I'm having such a good time. No, but he was like, he's you know, the he, best. He's like, are you taking a shit? <laughs> he's like, do you need some help? <laughs> yeah, he said this weird comment. He was like, maybe I can come back and watch, or vice versa. Yeah. I was I, like, wait, you so, like to watch girls so, poop? So she's going to take a dump. You're scared of rubber spiders? And he's going to take a dump. You're scared of rubber spiders on strings? And then what Jason does to this girl, I thought that was a badass. Cool death scene. Yeah. He T Terminator too. He T one thousand that bitch <laughs> right in her fucking yeah. like in the in the, he's like Ugh! and then Jason walks up behind him. He's like enough of your fucking driving. Cornhole in the ear and then just stabs him. It was in. a knife, and not then, a cornhole. Uh, I thought it was a screwdriver. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was it was his little uh, it was his little fishing knife. Yeah. He pulls out. He's yeah. got all the fucking belt. He's like, got the bat belt. His utility belt has got all secrets. Yeah. And he stabs him in the fucking head with it. The thing wrecks. He. That, and you mentioned this off camera, but and, and you're right. It's a very iconic scene when he climbs up out of the RV, and they have this shot, this static shot of him just standing there, breathing hard, with this, you know, on top of this RV. And it's like, you think I give a fuck about insurance? It was fucking fuck badass. Guy <laughs> that was, dude, that was one of the most iconic, most badass shots of Jason ever, standing on top of that RV with the smoke. It was actually the last scene they filmed for the for the movie. And also, what's funny about this is this was one of the producers on this was one of the producers for the original Halloween. Oh. So the whole fucking movie, he was up there ass like, no, you can't have this shot, you can't have that shot, and he was like penny pinching. So just to be dicks, this guy had a had a, a, a gator cooler, which I don't even know what the fuck that means. But he had something called a gator cooler. There was alligators in it. Five thousand dollar cooler. Ooh! But they snuck it on top of the RV, and you can see where the RV crashes, it spills apart and breaks everywhere. And they did that For just 5, to 000? fucking get him back. That's bullshit. Just a just a that's a shitty. Just a little do. finger in the butt surprise. But ain't. 
Butter it. Shoot him again. <laughs> Bam! Yeah. Colt McCoy. Oh, goddamn. Oh, yeah, they throw in the rules. Yeah, so there's rules now, and he goes to a library where there is none, and he gets books he on... He goes to raise a cult bookstore. No, yeah, uh, raise a cult. We get you fucking shit fast. It's like, uh, magical pass to fortune and power. Good luck on that one, Bankman. He's like, build me. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, yeah, he goes to some bookstore and he gets all this paganism shit. He's Great reading about it. He's shit. like, okay, so now I know after five minutes how to stop Jason based on ancient pagan ritual. Telling uh, Hot Girl, Sheriff's Daughter, is like, I know how to stop Jason if you just give me a chance I can stop Jason. Worst daughter ever. Yeah, so she's like, okay, cool. She picks him up. There's a high speed chase. Cops chase him down. He's rolling around in her vagine. There's so many moments that they, they show her vagina. And it's like, it looks okay, but, yeah, it's, but, in, it, but it's like, it's that's just a the vagina. Thing, like, as a guy, like a, like a girl's crotch in Levi's is not like something I'm like, oh shit. It's just a vagina. But he saw it and he was like, oh, I don't know if I can turn this down. But she was trying really she was, fucking hard. Well, you know, she's pretty hot she, though. She was attractive I mean, as hell. But yeah. She was trying really hard, but I would almost question that. I'd be like, you're trying too hard. Like, what kind of baggage do you have, girl? Is you a slut? Your dad's telling you I'm a serial killer and you still want to have sex with me in the jail cell. You got fucking wait a minute. daddy All issues. Right, wait a minute. Time out. That's, that's kind of hot. That's kind of hot. I mean, to do it, it yeah, would I, be, I'm but saying, I'd be questionable. If she thinks that you're a badass <clears throat> serial killer and you're like, I'm not going to deny it. I mean, if that turns you on, I'm definitely in for it. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, so anyway, so condom. they go back to the camp, and, and Tommy figured it all out. He's like, if Jason dies, for fucking some reason, he dies at the place that he was born in the lake, it's because he's like, no matter what they call it, it's still Crystal Lake, then he'll die forever. You'll float too! Tommy's in the boat. He's already, you know, rode out his fucking boat, and he's like... Jason, it's me you want. I'm Tommy. Don't you know? Jason, come on, you magnet. Come on, you butt face. Come on, you sticky vagina. Come on, you big doo doo head. He's doing the Arnold thing. Basically, I was waiting for him to yeah. be like, come on, come and get me. I'm here. Kill me. And Jason's like, I, he, it's kind of stupid of Jason at that point because he has the girl right there available to die. But, I, but then he's like, huh? Well, this is the, this is the end of Tommy Trill. You know, and we didn't mention this. This is the first time that they had one hero survive for three movies. Yeah. You know, so this is the end of Tommy. Like, we know as far as, like, the trilogy of Tommy and Jason, this is supposed to be the end. But it was, he was calling out such stupid insults. I think that Jason himself would be annoyed. He's, I'd like, he's like, can I just not choke this bitch to death? Shut up. And then he was like, all right, fuck it. You're saying so many bad insults. I'm just going to come over there and shove a machete up your fucking uh, pee pee hole. Because yeah. you're done. So Jason goes over there and, and he does it badass. He's walking the lake really forcefully. He's like, you think you're going to stop me? <laughs> Can't stop me with you that. You think your son is safe? I'm going to keep going down. I will find him! Zod! Is this, is this the uh, Detroit River? <laughs> like, It could just light on yeah, fire no matter perfect. what. So he lights the whole bitch around on fire and then Jason pops up. And he does this whole like Jaws attack on him. <laughs> he kind of like limp dicks on top of him though. He's just kind of like. <laughs> so the whole idea was, that Tommy had was to, to, to throw this noose around that he's got linked to this rock that he wants to throw over like an anchor. And it's and a loose drown, noose. <laughs> get to drown him, and that's going to kill Jason. Uh, you know, according to the pagan books it works. written by uh, the Blair Witch Project. But if you watch, the chain is so fucking loose. Anytime Jason just be like fuck this man. But I thought that, I thought that was funny. Is like this went on for a while. Like he's floating on the boat. Jason pops up. He's like, I'm gonna fight you off. Boom! And then Jason's like, fuck it. And then he comes back up, he's like, we fight a little. Then Jason finally jumps up, he's like, I'm tired of this shit. I'm gonna break the fucking boat in half. I'm not holding on to you forever, Jack. He cracks that bitch in half, and then he's like, okay, finally I got the thing around your neck. He floats to the bottom, he holds on to Tommy. Tommy's basically, he basically dies at this point. You know, he drowns. She runs from the kids to jump in, and that's when you got, you know, you got a good girl that she's gonna go do that for you. You know, you only, you only had about... You only went out with him for two That's weeks. pretty much, like, less than that. And she jumps in the water to save Tommy. He's pulling her down to kill her. She turns the motorboat on, chops his neck up. I mean, there was a nasty scene, because it, it goes like this. It goes... I see some glurps yeah. coming out of that bitch. And then finally gets Tommy back, re resuscitates him in the movie. It really, it's one of the best endings of the series, dude, because, like, it's a legit thing. Like, you understand why he can't get out, even though that shit was loose as fuck. You understand the idea about where he's there. There's not this last second fucking pop up out of the water. No. They, they kind of, dude, I love this director for this movie because they kind of did their own thing with it. They just yeah. skirted that line. I fucking love this movie. It's one of my favorite of the franchise. I give it, as well as a part four, I give this an 8.5.
I'm gonna go up there with 8.0 myself. I, I really fucking love what they, I, I really dug what the director did because coming off of part five and the disappointment that people had, they clickbaited the fuck out of us, by the way. They were the first clickbaiters. Really fast shout out, by the way, just two small things we missed. The death of Sheriff Garrick, Garris, getting his fucking back cracked in half was dope as that shit. That is not the yoga you want to go that, for. That was a fucking cool ass scene and another scene that would have been better if it weren't for that goddamn MPAA. Oh man, I'm fucking forgetting it. What's the person's name? Give it, give it to me. How, how, how? One, Jesus. two, and devil. three, what? and a four. What? Gotta throw a shout out to that death scene really quick and I fucking love this movie, man. It's one of my favorite Jasons for sure. Is it my favorite? I don't know. We're gonna do a ranking of the Jasons after this. I'm covered in fucking corn syrup. I'm getting tired of this. Next up, we got Telekinetic Nightmare on Elm Street Ripoff Part 9. Yeah! We love your fucking faces. If you're new to the channel, comment down below. Click that subscribe button and get some goddamn wham opinion. We watched a movie. Yeah. We watched a movie. We watched it. We watched a movie.